I was put into a world of parasites, creatures that evolve and grow as the days go on. To survive the apocalypse, I'll have to make friends, fight foes, and escape the island to get back home and stop the parasites for good. Let's see what kind of adventures I partake in while trying to survive Minecraft's toughest challenge yet. It's day one and every player was randomly dropped on the map. I was alone in a world full of dangerous parasites and I had to gear up. I quickly grabbed some wood from a nearby tree and used it to mine cobble for a full set of stone tools. While wandering this infested world, I spotted another player. He was swimming over to greet me. This is Magma, a mute who would join my team for the time being so we can survive together. Just as we were about to head off, another player spotted us in the distance, Rico, a friend from past events and a solid member to the team. So we adopted him and headed out as a unit. I've, just, I've already died twice, like. You died twice? What? Hello? Over a hill, we spotted a house. Abandoned, obviously, but a good place to bunker. The inside was nothing special, only having some basic items and a chest full of starter gear. Not really worth it. However, this house had a secret we would soon embark on. This place was a dungeon, and of course, we had to go check it out. Realizing the danger afoot, I quickly grabbed a few different veins of iron and made a set of tools. Now I'm safe. The first room that I entered introduced me to these parasites. Oh, you've been through this? Oh my word, what is that? What is that? Rico and I ventured in taking out our first suspect, and I was rewarded with a chest. Nothing great, but it's a start. Oh, oh my God. what in the world Jeez. is this? Oh, what in the absolute yuckiness. Oh Ugh, yeah, this stuff is disgusting, but it gets worse the further down I go. Along the way, Magma ended up dying to the dungeon's mobs, so Rico and I had to get over to help him. We're getting close to the bottom. Oh, Magma's uh. dead. However, the cascade of mobs was definitely an issue. We had to avoid them at all costs since our gear was basically nothing. I hid some of the mobs into a hole one after another, then made my attempt to go and revive Magma. I don't want to lose a teammate this early on, so I mined underneath him in hopes I could drop him down avoiding all of the mobs. Surprisingly, it worked, and we had a full team once more. Or so I thought. Oh, Rico's dead. Yeah, this is becoming an issue. But the same strategy worked on Rico, reviving him and getting the team back together. Thankfully, it wasn't all for nothing, as the area they died in led us to the deepest part of the dungeon, the nether region. This place has valuable chests with some crazy loot inside, and I wanted first dibs. My plan to get the gear was block off all sides from mobs, but I was almost immediately thwarted. Thankfully, I boxed up next to one of the chests and was able to start looting. I picked up ores, diamond gear, potions, and enchanted books, all within the first few minutes of scavenging this island. With such a find, I began looking for my team again when I met up with Magma. However, it seems my luck had run out as the parasites have caught up to us. I had just gotten back with him, and when I turned my head for a moment, he died. A wave of death erupted from the ground, targeting him and disappearing before I could even see. What? I didn't see anything. I was at a loss for words when it attacked. Oh, I'm at three hearts. I'm at three hearts. I'm at three hearts. Oh, no, 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 no. These parasites are deadly. Thankfully, I was quick to heal up and return to Magma with Rico at my side. I picked him up as Rico died again. Are you kidding me? All right, I'm sick of this place. I got Rico up for like the 80th time now, and then we all resurfaced. The dungeons are not for us. Not this early. Parasites are way too deadly. Once we all shook off that terror, I thought it best to set up camp at a new location. There, I made the decision to break away from my teammates. They were... Great in the caves. Oh, Rico's dead. But I was looking for a specific man, a surviving man. Someone I know can take on the parasites side by side with me, and my journey continued once more. I was out wandering the island alone again. The first gleaming metropolis I stumbled upon happened to be two people building what looked like a dock. Here lies Mexico. Apparently these two are creating a civilization here on a parasitic island. Good freaking luck, man. Once again, while on the run, I found a village. Seems to have been abandoned, but that doesn't mean no one is near. When I got close to one of the houses, I could hear voices inside. They led me inside, and I was shocked to see the man I had been looking for the entire time, one survivor standing right there. I bargained with him to follow me and break off from these people. Us two would make a great team, and he agreed. We fled to the other side of this village and took over one of the big houses as a temporary base. We settled into one of the rooms on the top floor, then we made a small mineshaft and decided it would be wise to gear up as fast as possible. 
Running around without diamond armor is no longer an option. Thus begins me carrying Survivor on my back throughout these caves. After gathering 56 diamonds on my own, I think I'm ready to make my gear and venture back into the world. So in our base, Survivor and I made full diamond armor each, as well as set up our level 30 enchant table, even though we don't actually have 30 levels. I also gathered the materials to craft one of the best items in the game, a diamond crossbow. This thing has carried me through events before, and the parasite one won't be much different. With our gear figured out, it was time to get going. We can either find a group of people to talk with, or we could hang out with the parasites and control their population spread. The first structure we stumbled upon was another dungeon, and since most players don't have the gall to loot these on day one, we went inside to see if that epic gamer loot was free and clear. Once we found the nether region again, the chests were ours for the taking. I got plenty more enchanted books, a few more ores, and amazing diamond pieces to add to the collection. But that's not even the best part. Soon after handling our own against the mobs... <laughs> that was a bad call! That was such a bad call! There's so many mobs! We found a second loot room. This one had insane gear once again, including a ton of potions that we can't even brew ourselves. However, my inventory was getting full, and that's an issue. So, we headed up with our spoils in search of real people. We need human interaction. Heck, a parasite-infected person would work at this point. By nightfall, we stumbled onto our first person, Lon. He was a nice guy, just building on the top of this hill solo, but he wasn't the main focus. There was a huge tower in the background peering down at us. We had to go check that out, so we left Lon to do his own thing and ventured onwards. At the top of the hill, we saw a makeshift civilization being made in one of those dungeons we were just in. The best part? Gumrock was the leader of this faction. Gumrock is a close friend and a stirrer of trouble, so when he told us he was only with two other people, we instantly agreed to team up, making an extremely powerful team. Whoa, whoa, whoa. If you're interested in some trouble, head over to the MX Rocks Minecraft server. This GTA-based server is filled with exotic guns, viable apartments, and huge winnable prizes. By being one of the top three killers on the server, you could win a cash prize of over $3,000. So log on today and get your kills using this discoverable ray gun, or these rocket boots. Just by playing the game, you can level up to prestige for some of the coolest gear in the game. But if hunting down your bounty across this widespread map isn't your thing, the server also offers other game modes like factions, one block, and battle royale like minigames. My favorite is of course one block, but heading over to factions and claiming the cough is just as fun. So if you want to join the server, use the IP on screen, it works for all Java and Bedrock players of any versions with no mods required. Now that I'm done using guns on the streets, let's get back to aiming them at the parasites. While we were talking over these plans, the guy we just met, Lon, fell to the parasites of the land. Now, my first thought was to go and revive the guy, but Gumrock was already sinister out the gate, and he came up with a brilliant plan. Wait, that guy is dead oh, all the way over there. Um, we have a bunch of books. Oh, hey, he's don't dead. Rescue him. Don't rescue him. Why? Because he has really, really good stuff that we can take off his body. Oh, Ooh. thanks, Gumrock. Thanks, Gumrock. I agreed. Free loot and one less person we have to worry about in the apocalypse. So he snuck over. While waiting out his death, another man strolled up to us, Anthony. Now this man is terrifying. He's one of the best PvPers I know, and turns out, he's homeless. So, while being the heartless group we were, I convinced him to join our team as our plus one. He is the perfect person to round us all out, and I'm confident we can survive this parasitic world together. Once Lon passed away, rest in peace, we took some gear and were on our way. <laughs> Yo! <laughs> what? Fake, like, like, we're so like fake. Vulture. We're so fake. fake. <laughs> Ooh, I'll take like that. vultures to the sword. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Longer, Day one has been a huge success. We have survived massive parasite attacks, made some new friends, and watched people perish for fun. This should be exciting, especially since we have a new home to start the next day with. We started off the next day as a team. All of us moving into the dungeon meant making a room to match our style. I spent some time making an actual room with all the materials I need to survive, and I added an epic window to look out over the land. During that process, my teammates mined out a hole in the wall and called it home. Glad I'm the only one invested here. 
Though peering through that window of mine led to our next mission, scouting out the competition. Our team got semi bored in the base, building will do that to you. So we figured why not go dungeon hunting and scouting the population. Now we weren't going for gear this time, but instead blaze rods. The nether region has a chance to spawn a room that has a blaze spawner in it, and those very rods are what we need to make the coolest armor in the game, and trust me, we need that to survive. While heading out, we stumbled into a group of people all cowering away from a flying parasite, introducing the yellow eye. This guy can spit out balls that one-shot you based on your armor and flies away if it's low on health, so it's pretty deadly. Thankfully, with our powerhouse of a team, there is no issue, and we saved the bowl people. Oh, I hit him! Okay, ah! I hit him! Ah! <laughs> Both of you save me! Oh my oh god! <sighs> I did a bad! Oh god. Oh my god. I don't have a bow. Nice. Oh, we yes, we just found people peering out of the wall. It was a lot of players all just trying to survive. However, that is not our problem. So we left pretty quickly to fight another parasite that spawned the other one. Thankfully, it was a piece of cake and it gave us a perfect view of a dungeon ahead. So me, Nao, Gum, and Survivor headed in to look for these rods. Unfortunately, the further down we got, the more and more this place looked looted. We stuck together and took out the easy mobs, but as soon as the nether was in view, we split up searching for this specific room. I was instantly distracted by the any remaining amount of loot in the treasure room, and my team kept searching for the rods to no avail. That just means this dungeon doesn't have it, so we went looking again. The next place we got to also looked looted, but that didn't mean it lacked a spawner. We once again split up searching for these rods, however, I think we found something that's even better. While looking around, three of us found an open door to a base. Now, technically, we aren't supposed to steal from others, and since Gumrock was an admin, he wasn't really on board with the plan. However, Survivor and I are his kryptonite, so we convinced him to leave while we stole all of this machinery inside. Does this stuff look whack to y'all? Cause it does to me too. But apparently we need all of this stuff to make the exo armor. The thing we need the rods for, you know, that epic armor. And since we grabbed these, that just means our resident scientist Neo doesn't have to make them. With Gumrock totally none the wiser, we broke the rules of the event, but left with some sick loot. However, we still didn't find the blaze rods, which was an issue because the more days we don't have this gear, the faster we die. Back at base, we established a basement in our tower. This would be Neo's lair. As I said, this man is our scientist, and that reigns true since he knows how to work all of the mechanical stuff behind the scenes. And after our little exploration, we dropped off our stolen goods to him and pawned it off as a good deed. And it wasn't against the rules. <clears throat> With our basement dweller put to work, he started making us commando gear. Now it's decent for sure, and it gives us a speed boost, which helps when we're running away from these ugly parasites, but right now my diamond armor is still better with Prop 4 on. After the upgrade, some of us wanted to head out to see if either players were keeping up with our gear progression, or if the parasites would kill us in the new stuff. Oh, behind me! Ah! Oh, holy. We're good. Oh, I did not see that guy till it was way too late and <laughs> scary. So we just ran around for a little bit, but that led to us discovering a helipad. This place was known about by other players and seems to be our best hope for escaping this terrible island. However, we also noticed a sealed bunker next to it, which had been taken over by protagonist's team. The scaredy cat could not be bothered to make his own base and brave the parasites. He actually had to take over a pre-built indestructible laboratory. This prompted us to get a little bit angry at their cowardice and enabled Neo to glitch into their base with a boat. He like just vanished through the door. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah. No, what? Man, what? Is him, baby. <laughs> no. Get it now. Easy work. Easy work. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right, everyone get some wood. Apparently this place was decked out and they did not have to work for it. So our new plan was to annoy them to death until they let us in, which worked a treat and we got to see the inside. It was a lab for sure, but I still have no idea what any of this stuff does. However, I'm sure Neo was in heaven. Once we were all inside, we came to the conclusion that they were base camping and if they were here tomorrow, we would come back and purge them from the server. This was their only warning. We left on terrible terms with Protag's team and would hopefully not have to meet them tomorrow.
Yesterday was a bit heated, however parasites have grown even stronger today, and yet my gear has not. I'm still stuck with basic diamond and commando armor, and unfortunately the only way to upgrade is still with Neo and blaze rods, so as a team we are back on the hunt. We went off to find a new dungeon, one we hadn't seen yet, and then once there we plunged below in hopes of finding a blaze spawner. At the nether region, of course I sidetracked a bit trying to grab even more gear. Not like I actually need it at this point for anything, my brain just won't let me ignore it. However, in that search I was able to find a brand new room, the very one that spawned blazes, so the team set up camp. Nao started sputtering off a list of things we would need which included quartz, obsidian, blaze rods, lava, and so much more. But for now, we were able to farm up what was around us while the blazes spawned in. Gumrock also had a looting sword which made the job that much easier. So we all just chilled here at the start of the day while the rest of the island was probably fighting for their lives. What an easy life we lead. After grinding out all the blaze rods we needed, it was time to head back to base and let the basement dweller reside in his workplace. So we traveled home and pooled all of our loot together for Nao, which included all of the other materials we'd gathered ourselves for these past few days. As I said, the list is extensive. Apparently he needed every ore imaginable, alongside all of the other stuff that we had gotten him. The dude's like a mile long grocery list. That's when we heard a knock at our door. I went up to check what was going on when I saw Dreadmask seeking asylum. Okay, he was fine, but apparently the lab that we had just built in the basement is harboring all of the things he needs for his own armor, which meant now we have two basement dwellers. And if he wanted his own gear, he'd have to help out Nail make ours, so technically everything's a win-win. He's not actually on our team, but he lives in our basement rent free. Now while we were out adventuring, a lot of other people began popping up around town. An entire new base of people was made in a hole in the ground. Weird choice, but I guess it works. These people seemed peaceful enough, so while visiting we didn't slaughter them. Although it would have been really easy to do so. I have to keep those tendencies aimed towards the parasites if we want to actually survive. Speaking of which, we heard news that there could be a way off of this island, and it had to do with that radio tower we saw at the helipad. Some of the players have been saying that there was a key code left on the island by an assumed mad scientist stationed here before us. We weren't sure if that statement was true or where the scientists or this code resided. However, the only lead that we had gotten from the other players was that it's possibly in a dungeon. Thankfully, what have we been doing the entire event? Exploring those exact things. So with deductive reasoning, our team figured out that the best chance to find this code is to go to a dungeon we haven't been to. We narrowed down all of the dungeons we had been to before and found the exact direction we would need to go in order to find a dungeon we hadn't been to. We started off as a team with very little hope that we would somehow magically find this code in a random dungeon, but if anyone's suited to do it, it's us. Within minutes, we found a dungeon that we hadn't been to yet. We all headed down in a rush and it didn't take us long to find a locked chest, the only locked chest we'd ever seen. Thankfully, Protag's team had been the one giving us the info. Not that we're on any good terms with them, we just overheard the information. We were able to unlock the chest and inside we found a journal. This was basically a clue, one step closer to getting off the island. After finding this journal, we went right back to the bunker, but unfortunately when we inputted the code, we realized this wasn't the one to the radio tower, and we hadn't actually in fact solved the puzzle. You think the labs have something? Maybe there was still hope. Maybe, just maybe, we would find a safe that needed the exact code we found, and maybe that safe contained a book in it with a radio code to get off this island. Assuming that all of that happened, as a team, we might have just been able to use the radio tower and call for an evacuation, supposedly scheduled for the very next day. That would be the only way any of us are getting off this island, and the only way to survive the upcoming parasitic war. To finish out day three, I went back to base to check on Nao. We ventured for a while, and I'm sure this man had made some progress on the gear, assuming we stay long enough to use it. When I got back to the basement, to my surprise, Nao had created an actual nuclear reactor. Huh? This man is inventing cold fusion in our basement. It is not that deep, but apparently all this equipment is inevitable if we're going to survive the upcoming threats and get off this island with our lives. Now that we have hope soon arriving, we had to gear up quickly. We sent out a radio signal yesterday and our best guess is we should see signs of rescue soon. But until then, I had to help Nao get us geared. My first chore was to go back and forth in the caves collecting lava for him. 
I guess it's the fuel that he needs. Thankfully, no parasites showed up. The next chore was getting more diamonds, which should have been given based on how rare they are and the armor that we need, which meant mining trip. However, I won't bore you with the details. Let's just say I have the perfect vision to find diamonds down in these caves. After grabbing those up real quick, we heard something come over the radio. Sierra 16, this is Echo 49. We are on approach. ETA is 20 mics. That means that they're close. So we gathered up our materials. Nao crafted himself half exo armor, which is still all we could afford after four days of grinding, and we all went to the helipad. Upon arrival, a bunch of other people were looking to get evac'd, and it was a mess, especially since we were the ones to send for the signal. Personally, I don't think it's a good idea to leave. What happens if the military wants to get rid of us? Or if the parasites attack the helicopter? Too many unknowns are afoot, so I sat back and watched as the chaos unfolded. We don't currently have the resources to extract all of you, so I'll be taking five of you back to the base for briefing. Five people. All the work that we did just to get five people off this island. As I suspected, things aren't going to go as well as people hoped. But I held my tongue. If people want to leave, they may have to fight over it, and I'm not interested in starting a war leading to the parasites winning. So all the team captains met and talked about who they think should leave this place, or at least pass on the info we had gathered while on the island. After a lengthy discussion, the rescue consists of Emerald Lord, the man who knows the most about the previous scientists on the island, Pidgey, a member of the Grotto, who is in desperate need of evac, MI Genius, also a struggling part of the Grotto, Taylory, who is the leader of his own team but barely surviving, and Peep. I know nothing about this guy. The only thing I know about them collectively is that they're all on struggling teams. They loaded into the helicopter and took off in the morning, finally escaping this place, giving us all hope that it is possible to survive this toxic environment. Oh. It's like he's never flown a helicopter before. Oh. 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 How did he get here? No, just beat. This beat is unreckoned. Look at it go. Hey, there's a oh, parasite! What is that? <laughs> they got attacked by a parasite. What is that? What? What is what? We've got an identified. We've been hit. We've been hit. Something hit us. And it all went to crap so fast. The helicopter was attacked by some cascade of bad luck, which ended the pilot's life, crashing the remaining five and putting them in terrible shape. This was the beginning of the end. I rushed over to see what happened and it wasn't good. Everyone was dead. The helicopter wasn't lifting off anytime soon. This sent every single person into a panic and no one knew who to trust. That led to the biggest conspiracy theory of all. Emerald Lord was not who he says he is. If you ask Well, I don't know what's going to happen. What like how are we going to get rescued? Okay, you know, we'll you know who would know is day. Emerald I'm, Lord. I say I say we take him hostage. Make him tell us. True, he's he the one who know brags the most. about everything, right? Okay. Why does he know the most? Yeah. Which means it was time for answers. Emerald, Emerald, we need to have a conversation with you. No, 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 no. no. Come on. You can come back with us to Holland. Nah, he's Hold having on. a conversation Hold with still. us right now. No, we're going to Holland. Oh boy, I'm in a hostage situation. He's right. We needed the truth. We needed answers. Oh, oh, did you need to know how I knew why, the parasites and what Why they did? is everything going wrong as soon as you spoke up? I don't why know. Why did you crash the helicopter? Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Why did you do it? Working with you like a high He looks like a soldier. Parasite host. I want out here. We need to go. You're with them, Emerald. You crashed the plane. I bet you should. It's all here. What the fuck? What the fuck? In the chaos, I knocked Emerald Lord, making sure he wasn't going anywhere. But for some reason, at that moment, when tension was high, parasites began popping up out of nowhere, as if to distract us from the real threat. Emerald was able to make it off into the woods while people were freaking out about a few bugs. Since he was gone, we all grouped up, leading to us figuring out what needed to be done next. I think... I think we should have a. I think the whole end know what's going on and they're protecting him. Our biggest suspicion is that Emerald Lord could have been one of the scientists on the island. He's found every hint, every trace of human life, and now he says it's a coincidence. It's all starting to come together. He was here as a spy or even an infected host. We have no idea what he is at this point. All that matters now is we find him and take him down. Otherwise, no one on the island is safe. That's when they attacked. 
a giant parasite came to break up our meeting. The fight began and people started shooting. Enemies and allies alike fell to the creature, all while it spawned in more and more. Oh, it's on me! It's on me! Oh my god! I made it to the tree line with a few friends as everyone left tried to fight the mobs unsuccessfully. If we were going to survive, we had to make a break for it, as so many parasites were after us. I grouped up with Protag and his team while everyone else fought. I have a crossbow, remember? Some of these people have guns, let them fight. I know, how brave of me. But we started discussing a plan to get out of Emerald Lord. His team graced the hill and we all moved out. Dread started burning the lot while the rest of us opened fire on his team. We didn't know who was working with him, so everyone needed exterminated. Once we had Emerald trapped with nowhere to go, he finally told us about how his team has been secretly working with him to keep us all on the island. His goal was for no one to get off, and that's why he crashed the helicopter. Knowing that, myself, Dashing, and Gumrock broke into his team's base to look for any clues, signs that maybe what he was saying is false. But in fact, we found the opposite. Well, this book changes everything. Read it. At my horror, I turned to page four to read that spies had befell our land and infiltrated the ranks. Not a single person can be trusted. Dashing and I ran to take out the grotto members. I took out Honey while he sprinted towards the rest. We let them fully die as a warning toward Emerald Lord. This is what happens when you betray us. However, even though we thought everything was under control, we had his team in shambles, we had taken him prisoner, nothing could go wrong. Until it did. We all discovered this island will be our final resting place. Emerald had gotten mad now. Maybe even body snatched by a parasite, but he holds a button unleashing all parasites across the island. He is forcing us to stay here. Stay here to die. Two teams began to form. The ones who wanted to survive on the island with Emerald, and the ones who wanted to escape via military coming tomorrow. I wanted to leave this place, and no one was going to stand in my way. So we tried to kill Emerald, but... He wouldn't stay down, which only led to us making him even more mad with his eventual escape. Still, no idea how he did that. With the parasites being controlled by Emerald, the entire island just got a whole lot scarier. Oh, L just oh. died. L fold and oh. Taylor. Oh. L. Uh -oh. Let's go. <laughs> okay. God. They, pro they probably died at the grotto. I did all that. I did all that. They do die. They do die. You staked your life on them. Oh my gosh. Oh, I know, oh, I know where they died. Bro. They died oh, over there. People. Yeah, they let's died go, at let's the, go help. They let's died go at the help, lava man. base. Good let's order. also farm their gear. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Massive parasites began popping up out of nowhere. Players were dropping like flies in chat, and we had to save them. Myself and the Escape Alliance began running around the island trying to revive all the players falling. I tried to reach some people who were just out of my range, but their death gave me some insane loot, like a minigun with a bunch of ammo. This was a huge find since I had only been using the ancient technique of a crossbow for the entire event. I was glad to upgrade my weaponry. I also found some extra diamond pieces and 60 diamonds in a satchel. That's a huge find, but I still need to help the others. I met with Dashing and waves of creatures just started attacking us. We fought some off, but the moment we tried to take out the spawners, everything went wrong again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> what happened to your armor? Yeah, everyone's armor broke. Whoa! Oh! 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 Oh, it's got me! The vines got- Oh, God. Oh, oh, yeah, oh another one, another one, another one! Another one. One here, one here. One more! Get him, nice. Another one, another one. Two more, three more! Three more, three! There's Jesus. something underground. Purple, can you hear me? I'm gonna die again, but I'm getting it. I'm dying again, but I'm gonna get it. I don't care. I don't care how it goes. I'm gonna get him. Purple! I don't care if I die again! I'm getting this mother yucker. I didn't get him. After a long and brutal fight into the night, we ended up winning. The boys and I all returned to base with the goal to end out the day with exo armor, a step above from what we've been wearing. Then after that fight, it's clear now we need it. So we gave Nao all of the loot we collected so far and he used his advanced machine to spit out epic gear. 
However, after I had grabbed my set from the chest and tested it out, those parasites we've been afraid of began peeking through our basement. They dug up through the floor and got into the base, but it gets worse. We checked the chest and apparently myself and Neo were the only people who had a full set of exo armor. Dude, dude half, all of, like, half of the exosuits are gone. While I was focused on getting the gear, someone was taking our exosuits right from under our noses. The spies that we had just read about earlier were acting. Unfortunately, we don't even have time to snuff them out. The base was falling apart around us, the attacks were getting worse and worse, even the minigun I have would unload drum after drum into some of these parasites before they would die. So our alliance moved out. The mountain base was no longer usable. We grabbed what we could from the basement and abandoned our home. The only safe place we could think of at this point was the helipad. The laboratory was indestructible and it might have the machinery we need to continue making armor. So the big old bunch of us moved in. This won't get cramped. To get away from all the noise, I built myself a little house. I think it's adorable, and I can officially say I beat the side quest of making my own base. Oh, also Gumrock and I started a potato field in the lab. Those of us who lack basic tech logic were kind of doing our own stuff for the rest of day four since we didn't understand a single thing the nerds were saying. But at this point, all we can hope for is a rescue the next day. We are in shambles right now. Um, what you doing with that? Day five, the last day on the island. Hopefully at some point today, the military will be able to evac us to a safe place far, far away from these nightmarish parasites. However, being the last day meant final preparations, making sure all of our teammates are ready for the battle ahead. But when doing a head count at the start of the day, I noticed that Survivor had gone missing. I don't know if he's safe outside the bunker alone, so I'm kind of worried for the man. He was my first real teammate, someone I had fought beside, truly my brother throughout this event. No way I could leave him behind. Although sometimes you don't get the happy ending. Dashing and a few other players made it back to the bunker after a small scout mission. They had discovered Emerald Lord's team location and the members of said team, which included Survivor. He had switched sides, and I had to be the one to kill him. Before that could happen, parasites began popping up out of nowhere, signaling the end. If the helipad wasn't safe, then we might need a new place to stick it out till the military arrives. We found a base in the ocean that can only be described as a water fortress. I mean, the only parasites making it close to us are the flying type, and that's what the minigun's for, so this might be a great place to relax. Unless a random supply drop is announced and everyone wants to go for that, we all headed back to the helipad for this drop. Not sure why they had to drop us supplies, unless that meant we'd be here for a lot longer than expected, and we'd be having to protect ourselves. While awaiting for the drop, the worst I could fear happened. Emerald Lord showed up right outside with Survivor. Survivor, what are you doing out there? Oh, well, Survivor oh, I'm betrayed the right us. Side, man. That's what I'm doing. What? Oh, I knew, I knew, I yeah. I called it. I called it. I called it. I called it. A door away stands my best friend in the event, blocking us from getting the supply job and keeping us a prisoner on the island. I will not stand for it. We went outside, and apparently that was enough for them to run off. I got out late, but met up with Anthony, who chased away Dino. They talk a big game for not being able to show it. But as everyone grouped up, one man shot at us from the top of the helipad. It's Survivor! It's Survivor! Survivor had returned for the faded 1v1. Oh, burn! Burn all of you! Bye bad. I had to end like this, welcome in. Ending where? Oh, like yeah. what, Survivor? I had done it. Survivor was dead. I killed my brother this event, and it wouldn't be the last. After Emerald suffered the loss of his best PvPer, he ran off for now, but we still have one final fight to end all of this chaos. The boys all backed up to the water castle, the only place safe for the night. The entire team was here, and we all wished to get off this island. And the only thing we are waiting for now is the military. Day broke, and in our boredom, Gumrock wanted to duel me with crossbows. Unfortunately for him, I'm just better. Oh, bye. <laughs>
Do you think you're talking about? Just place it here, it's fine. The red's coming on the island. Look at it. What? Where? I'm just saying I will... I'm just saying that I will remember... Yeah, yeah. Sorry? Sorry. I hope you... Gum, <laughs> I'm a little bit better at it. Right after killing him, we heard something along the radio. We're sending helos to the landing pad as soon as possible. Be prepared for boarding and takeoff. The heli was inbound, and we had to be at the helipad if we wanted to escape this place. So to leave, we need to secure the pad and make sure no helicopters crashed like last time. On the way over, we noticed that all of the trees and landscapes were changing around us. This was the blood of the parasites changing the biome at will. The last and scariest phase of these creatures was upon us. Things were spawning left and right as we were awaiting rescue. However, parasites are not our only concern. Emerald Lord's team was still out there, ready to emerge as the biome changed for good. With its completion, all of Emerald's team popped up at the laboratories. Sure, we may have more people, but they have parasites on their side. We all spotted the first of many helicopters coming to pick us up, which made both teams scatter. They wanted to stop us from getting on, while we tried to protect those who were evacing. I used my scar from high ground just shooting who I could, while fights were taking place between all of the best PvPers. Back at the heli, Dreadmask had betrayed the team, allying himself with Emerald Lord, which makes sense as he seemed to be the most suspicious for stealing our exo armor. And while he was fighting, Emerald Lord made the mistake to rush and ground the helicopter. That allowed myself and Protag to shoot at him, killing Emerald Lord. And if he stays down this time, we actually have killed the biggest menace on the server. But again, it's only if he stays down. However, one helicopter leaving is a solid sign. We did get one out of here, which means someone survived. Next on the agenda was Dino. I entered a 1v1 with him, but soon turned into a 2v2 with Nao helping lead the charge. Oh, Nao, man, I'm sorry. SPF, SPF, it's Dino, it's Dino. Bashing, it's Dino, it's Dino. Right here, right here. But the fight was long fought, eventually even leading us into a 4 versus Dino in a cave. But this guy just took forever to kill. As that fight took place, players on Emerald's team began dropping like flies. The last player left was Peepo, who we all fought on the helipad. It's not laggy. You are. This is my last message. You wanna go out? Do a dash. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. And the fight concluded honorably. Another helicopter arrived and almost everyone else was able to leave. I got to see some of my own teammates leave, like Nao. The only ones left were myself, Protag, Gumrock, Anthony, and Dashing. We are the remaining five and all we have to do to escape is fight off the incoming wave of parasites. Easy, right? Okay. Left side, left side. Oh, I'm at three hearts, holy. Yep, we did it boys, we made it off the island safe and sound. If you watched all the way to the end, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I have a lot more of these planned for the future that you do not want to miss. Let me know what your favorite part was in the comments, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.